boy, we got a doozy on today's show because an NBA analyst, and I'll put that in quotation marks as you'll see why I did that in just a few moments, suggested that the Miami Heat should trade for Klay Thompson, the struggling shooting guard out in the Bay Area. We'll discuss everything on this possible situation and scenario and if the Miami Heat should pull the trigger on the four-time NBA champion. But first, I need you guys to help me. Before I walked in the studio today, my boss has challenged me and Heat Nation to get 200 likes on this video. They said it couldn't be done. I said, are you kidding me? Heat fans, they're going to rise to the occasion. So don't prove me wrong. Let's show them all the full force of the Heat fans. Hit that like button right now. All right. This is the NBA analyst I was talking about, Mr. Kendrick Perkins. And Oh, man, if you follow some of his work, it's uh, some of the takes he has are very interesting. But he does like to ride, in quotes of him, goons from South Beach. But this is what he said on Kendrick, or on Kendrick Perkins, on Clay to the Miami Heat. He said, the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Clay Thompson with an Eric Spolstra head coach. Again, when you watch a guy like Clay Thompson, one of the best shooters to ever touch the damn basketball, to ever touch that damn, well, that is in a slump like he's in. It's more than just shooting the basketball. He's mentally not there. So after Kendrick Perkins suggests that maybe Klay Thompson needs a change of scenery from Golden State, maybe the Bay or Miami is going to be the spot for him to land. Could he up his numbers and really start to take form like the old Klay Thompson next to Jimmy Butler and Bam and Abayo in an Eric Spolster-led system? Should they do it? I'll discuss. But when you look at what Klay Thompson has done this season, it hasn't been pretty for Klay. This is, give Kendrick Perkins some credit, he at least knows that Klay Thompson is one of the best shooters to ever touch the basketball. He's probably top five in NBA history. But this season, it's been a struggle for Klay. 14 a night, 40% from the field, and 34% from three. He's shooting the ball 12, 13 times a night, only getting 14 points shooting that many times that's not good the volume is there for clay but the efficiency isn't so you have to wonder is clay thompson cooked i mean listen he's had multiple devastating injuries to his achilles to his acl so father time might be catching up with the sharpshooter because listen you have back-to-back -back injuries like he had two or three years ago you're going to take some time to get back to your normal self but we thought Clay was back. I mean, last year he was averaging 22 a night, shooting 41% from three on 18 shots. Like, they, he was good last year. But this year, the defense hasn't been there, and the shooting certainly hasn't been there either. When you look at his advanced shooting numbers this season through the 14, 15 games he's played, when he's close to the basket within 10 feet, because he can get to his spot around the basket, he's shooting 54.2%. That's fine. But when he gets in that pull-up mid-range area, it's 46.2 on 3.3 attempts. It's one of his favorite things to do. Pump fake, drive inside, one dribble pull-up mid-range jumper. Not able to convert at that high clip that he is used to doing. But the staggering number to me is his pull-up three-point percentage. It's only about one three a night, but 27.3%. He's just not hitting shots when putting the ball on the deck and then firing it up beyond the arc. He can still shoot the ball in a catch-and-shoot situation, very elite from beyond the arc. But when you play against good defenses in when it matters most, they're not going to allow a good shooter like Clay to get open looks from beyond the arc in catch-and-shoot situations. So you're going to have to use a screen, one dribble right, one dribble left, and get up a three with a contest in your face. And if he's only shooting 27% in those situations – well, that's a little bit concerning. And I want to ask you before I give you my final answer. What say you? Should the Heat trade for Klay Thompson? Hey, type Y for yes. Type N for no. It's tonight. Pin comment. I'm going to give my answer just after this YouTube ad break. So let it play and stay tuned for my answer. My answer? Hell no. I am not trading for Klay Thompson. It makes zero sense for the Miami Heat when they have a certain someone out playing Klay Thompson. We'll talk about that in a second and going to tell you why I say no. But first, I got to give some love to our sponsor on today's show, and that is Prize Picks, the best daily fantasy sports app in North America. It's daily fantasy sports made easy, and they're offering you a $100 first deposit match. If you go to prizepicks.com 
backslash CLNS and input code CLNS. I've already looked ahead to Thanksgiving, you know, tradition. No NBA basketball on Thursday, so we're watching some football. Christian McCaffrey, they got a deal. It's usually 110 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Well, they brought it down to a half for you. Another reason why I love prize picks. I'm taking the more on that and pairing it with my guy, Sam Howell, leading the charge against the Dallas Cowboys. I'll take more than 257 and a half passing yards. You can ride my picks. You can fade my picks, but don't take my word for it. Take rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz, and others who play prize picks on a daily basis. One more time, go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Shout out to prize picks. One reason why Clay Thompson trade, I say no and probably will not happen. Well, it's because of his contract. He is owed $43.2 million the rest of this season. That means you're going to have to match that salary if you make a move for Clay. So the Heat would have to give up some pretty big contracts to get that mark. And maybe it's Kyle Lowry who's 29. Listen, I want to say this. I'm still not doing the trade, even if you get rid of Kyle Lowry. I know a lot of us want to get rid of Kyle, but I don't think Clay Thompson is even worth it. And plus, he's an unrestricted free agent this upcoming year. Are you really trading for a one-year rental? And when if you really want Clay Thompson, just wait till the offseason. But there is really no need for Clay Thompson because this man right here is playing better than Clay Thompson. Duncan Robinson has been unbelievable this season. He is the better basketball player when you compare Duncan Robinson and Clay Thompson. What a world we live in where Duncan Robinson is actually better than Clay Thompson, and that is not me being a biased Heat fan. I think the entire NBA landscape and analyst media, whoever it is, would agree with me. Because when you see what Duncan has done over the last six games in Miami, and why did I pick the last six games? Well, that's because that's the amount of times that Tyler Hero has been out. And Duncan Robinson has started in replace of Tyler Hero. And he's averaged, these stats are no joke, 20 points per game on 50% shooting and 49% from beyond the arc. Are you kidding me? In six games, Duncan Robinson, 20 points on 49% shooting from beyond the arc. He's also assisting more than he has in his career. Three and a half assists per game. He's drawing defenses in and finding the open cutters on the baseline and Bam and Abayo in a pick and a roll. Duncan Robinson has been absolutely terrific. He has changed how this Heat team's outlook of the season is going to go. We were all thinking that the Heat needed to add another scorer, and they were going to struggle with their three-point shooting this regular season after losing Gabe Vincent and Max Cruz. But Duncan Robinson has by himself filled those two holes that the Heat fans were wondering how they were going to get filled by Pat Riley. And if you remember what I said about Duncan being better than Clay, just look at their numbers this season side by side. Duncan is averaging more points per game. He's averaging more assists per game. The rebounds are semi-close, just like the assists are, but the efficiency is where Duncan Robinson really takes the edge in these two players lined up together. 8% better from the field and 9% exactly better from beyond the arc. Duncan Robinson has been so damn good this season. It's actually hard to put into words what he's done for this Heat team basically mitigating the loss of Tyler Hero over the last six games. Duncan has been unbelievable next to Bam and Jimmy over the last six games, and I want to show him some love right now. Show Duncan Miami runs on Duncan. Spam those 55s down in the comment section, showing that guy some love. He has really turned around his NBA career. And I want to go into more detail on Duncan Robinson because his advanced shooting numbers back up the improvement he has made. I mean, he was out of the rotation last year. He averaged six points per game in the regular season in 22-23. But in the postseason, he got some PT. He single-handedly won the Heat in NBA Finals game on the road in Denver in game two, having double-digit fourth-quarter points and just changing that game. He was also terrific against Boston, by the way, in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think Duncan really started to get his confidence back in the playoffs last season, and it has just translated into the regular season. But this is the number right here that is the most surprising to me that I really wanted to get hit home for you. Duncan Robinson, less than 10 feet from the basket, is shooting 60% from the field. Yes, 
Duncan Robinson, 60% when you're that close to the basket. But it's also the field goals. 3.2 shots a game close to the rim. That has not been the story for Duncan Robinson in the past. It's been three-point shot or a bust. He has made a very significant effort to get to the rim, be better cutting off ball, allowing the offense to flow more, and it's just opened up this Heat offense. It's allowed them to score more points. They were one of the worst offensive teams in the NBA last season, in the regular season. Now they're starting to get that top half portion this year. It's all because of Duncan Robinson. And by the way, we mentioned Klay Thompson's poor pull-up three percentage. Robinson does not have that issue whatsoever, shooting almost 25% better from the field at that three-point line when dribbling the ball compared to Klay Thompson because Duncan is so damn good at using a Bam at a bio screen, one dribble to his right, pulling up into a shot. He's not afraid to put the ball on the deck like he was in 2019, and that is why he's made a very significant stride in his player development. Credit to the Miami Heat and credit to Duncan Robinson, which is why I owe Duncan Robinson an apology. Duncan, I know you're watching this video, so come here, come here, come a little close right now because I want to apologize. I said we needed to trade you. I said the $18 million that the Heat owed you this season was a waste of money, and they needed to attach a first-round pick to your contract just to move off of you. I am so sorry, Duncan Robinson. I Hopefully you can forgive me, and we can move on, and you can help the Heat bring back a title to South Beach, fourth in franchise history. I believe in you, Duncan Robinson. Now I will never stray away from you again. Shout-out to U55. And that's why I wanted to give a shout-out, right? When Hero left the... Heat's lineup, the Heat's starting lineup with that sprained ankle, we all expected the Heat's offense to take a crazy dip and then the struggle. Well, on the contrary, they're actually 5-1 and one since Hero went down and the offense has stayed the same, if not gotten a little bit better. That's because Duncan Robinson's been able to shoot 49-50% from three over the last six games and average 20 a night. He has opened up this Heat offense and Listen, I still think Tyler Hero is much needed for this Heat team to take it to the next level, and I believe he should start when he comes back from that injury in about one to two weeks. But the fact that Duncan Robinson has made this a conversation of who should start in that lineup that opens the floor is just a credit to how well Duncan Robinson has truly played. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter. Shout out to you guys for making it throughout the entire video. If you made it through the entire video and don't follow me on Twitter already, I don't know what you're doing. I cover the heat, not on YouTube, but as well on Twitter. And the best way to be informed is subscribing and follow me on Twitter. So don't miss out at Nick underscore Roloff.